Hello, VR designer Chris here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I built this show accurate PDC. I was using Blender, and I'm going to go through sort of the thought process. It took about four hours to make this, and first, I'm going to start off with some images of an actual PDC from the show. The next step is I'm going to use primitive shapes to block out a general idea of the model primitive shapes including spheres and cubes, stuff like that. The next thing I'm going to do is design something relatively simple but important, which are the barrels. So by doing this, I'm going to use a cylinder and I'm going to stretch it and warp it. So by making these barrels, I'm using a lot of vertex manipulation and also I am using the scale tool as well and here we have some edge looping so i'm making cuts into the shape itself and then from there i'm going to manipulate it by using some extruding some edge loop selection moving around it's all very simple stuff but when you add it all together it can make a relatively complex and interesting design on a simple shape the great thing is once you have one barrel done, you can copy and paste it for the other five barrels, making a total of six barrels. Next thing I'm going to do is work on the back side of the PDC or the booty. And the main idea is that I want to make this model lower poly than the original VFX model so it can run better in gaming engines. So keeping that in mind, I wanna have the general shape but still have it be optimized for gaming engines. So I'm just blocking out a general shape using extruding and scale tool, you know, very common stuff that I was using before. Also, I can't emphasize enough how important edge loops are for this build. When you're dealing with cylinders and stuff, using edge loops really helps because you can shape the model exactly the way you want. So there's just tons of edge loops I'm using here for the details of the backside of the PDC. I'm very happy with the build so far, but I think it's time to add some details to the ammo crates on the side. At least I think that's what they are. So first I'm gonna start off with a simple bezeling of the edges to fit the shape a little bit better. And of course, using vertex manipulation is pretty essential for this as well. Now, the whole idea is that this is a hard surface model. So there's gonna be a lot of insetting and extrusions and edge looping, stuff like that to build up a general shape. Once you get block out the general shape, now we can start adding uh, finer details, which I'm taking this panel here, breaking it down, slicing it up, then I'll be selecting every other panel, extruding it, and it's gonna add some nice detail to the back of this ammo crate box thing, whatever you want to call it. I'm also doing a little bit of cleanup as well because it's always good to find ways to clean up the model, especially because I want this to run in the gaming engine eventually. So now I'm adding additional detail to the side of this ammo crate, and it's just a lot of extruding, a lot of slicing, and uh, yeah, these fine little details are going to add up to make a, a very nice looking piece of 3D geometry. So another thing I like to do is take panels that already exist and slice them up. Um, for this build, I'm not using any kit bashing, so it's kind of tedious to design all these little intricate designs, but I think at the end of the day, it's gonna look really good. And of course, I'm basing this off of a model that already exists. So I wanna keep it true to that. Of course, I'm gonna add my own little optimization, my own little flair to it, my own little spice. But uh, yeah, so once you have the panels done once, you can copy and paste them, which is very nice. So yeah, I'm just gonna add a few more fine details and we are almost done with this ammo crate. It's uh, something I'm pretty happy about. I think it looks pretty freaking awesome. It's gonna add these little buttons or I don't know what to call them here, bolts to the uh, side here. They were on the original model, so why not? I'm gonna add them as well. It's so one thing I wanna show you here that's pretty interesting is called using the circle select tool. There's various ways to select stuff in Blender and the box select is probably the most common one, but circle select can be very handy as well. So now I'm going to copy and paste the completed 
button bolt thing and uh, yeah it's time to move on to design the drum of the PDC so I'm going to be using a lot of extrusion a lot of you know uh, we've been talking about this a lot already so a scale tool stuff like that now I'm sure there's a easier way to select every other panel like I'm doing here um, in Blender, but I'm um, not a huge expert in Blender, but I just do it manually to get it over with. You guys know a better way of selecting something like every other uh, panel like I'm doing here. Let me know in the comments down below. But uh, yeah, this detail was on the original model, so I'm adding it as well, and I think it looks pretty cool. Now I'm going to start designing a little bar that holds up the ammo crate pretty straightforward stuff and I'm also going to be doing the base of the PDC it's a cylindrical shape that just kind of holds it and helps it rotate around so I'll be designing that as well the next thing I'm going to be focusing on is this round sensor sort of thing um, it's used as the eyes of the PDC so by using the circle select tool I'm going to select certain areas and extrude it um, all based off of a sphere. I made sure that I used the appropriate amount of polygons on the sphere to add the detail that I wanted. Of course this could also be optimized but I'm going to do the major optimization later on when I'm going to throw this into a gaming engine. The base idea is I want to get the major design points done and over here I'm also going to be doing um, additional details and um, adjustments to the ammo crate holder up things. These bars that hold up the ammo crate. Speaking about the ammo crate, I changed my mind about one of the sides. I initially had those sliced bars on both sides, but now I'm thinking of something different. So now I'm using the panel previously to make adjustments to it. At this point, I'm jumping around a lot, designing many little things at the same time. I'm adding another bar to the center of this. Now I'm jumping to the base of the turret, now going to back to the bars. So I am jumping around a lot. This might be a little confusing, but I think at this point, I just wanted to design each smaller element um, at the same time simultaneously, just to get to a point where I'm happy with it. So that's basically where I'm at here. It might be a little confusing for the viewer, but uh, 3D mo modeling can be confusing sometimes. Now I'm going back to design, let's call it the eye of the PD I actually had a lot of fun designing this part because I think it's a very unique element on the PDC. So I'm using the circle select tool and a bunch of other stuff to um, extrude and give this nice uh, interesting detail to a simple sphere making it you know a lot more interesting to look at and make it look like it has um, some sort of function. Also we can't forget about the little uh, attachments on the side so this is going to be I'm just adjusting the base of the attachment here it's going to be a little I don't know what to call it like a satellite dish sort of thing so yeah I'm building that as well now I'm going back to the bars that are supporting the ammo crates and I'm also going to be doing some cleanup as well some of the mesh does not look right so there's a lot of cleaning up that you have to do sometimes when 3d modeling of course there's always more cleanup to do but I'm just taking this uh, bar and doing some obvious points where that need uh, cleaning up. So yeah, making the bars that are holding up. The ammo crates is gonna be a reoccurring theme because I make adjustments to it constantly. Now I'm happy with it, so I'm going to mirror it and put it on the side. So now we have the uh, same ammo crate on both sides at this moment. Now it's time to make additional adjustments to the base. So this includes, you know, selecting certain things and adding, um, you know, more details. All right, now it's time to go back to the panels that hold up the ammo rounds. So it's going to also turn into these um, deflector panels, let's call them. They were in the original model, so I decided to put them into this model. Not exactly sure what they're called or what they're for. There could be maybe sensor arrays or something like that, but you'll see them in a moment um, as I build them out. But uh, yeah, it's attached to the bars that hold up the ammo crates together. So yeah, they're all sort of connected. Now I'm going to make adjustments to this plate that holds the barrels into place. Now it's time to tweak 
the position of certain objects and the scale. So I'm making minor tweaks here and there, just doing some routine maintenance, I guess you can call it. <laughs> making some adjustments to that, making um, everything look neat. I'm also freestyling this a little bit, making my own twist onto the design. Of course, staying true to the original design, but making adjustments where I see fit. Now I'm adding additional detail to the bottom circular base that holds the um, PDC up. And also, of course, tweaking the back or the butt of the PDC as well. I'm also going to be making tweaks in various areas using the edge loop tool. This might be a good time to talk about booleans. Booleans are used to cut something away from a model. So right now I'm using the these panels here and I'm extruding them to an extreme length to then intersect with an existing model to cut it away. So this is a very handy tool to use in 3D modeling. And it's pretty simple as well once you get the idea of it. Basically, I like to use existing panels, extrude them, intersect them, and then boolean them. And you get some pretty awesome results from that. I'm now making some final tweaks to the bar that um, attaches to the ammo crate because I will be duplicating it and reflecting it because I'm now finally satisfied with it. So I want to make it, you know, the same on both sides. Here we have some adjustments to parts of the um, sensor eye array. Of course, um, adding more detail here is um, something I wanted to do because uh, just let's make it a little bit more interesting because I also wanted to add like a port for an addit additional sensor array. So that's what um, is going on right here. So the sensor array is going to be more of like a camera system is sort of the uh, idea that I thought would be cool. So I'm just, uh, you know, bezeling some edges and making some slices to it. So yeah, the idea is that I want this to be a uh, very camera like a uh, security camera like almost. And of course, extruding is also important as well. So over here, I want to build out these two sort of arms that keep the PDC uh, in place and can change, or I should say theoretically change the angle of it. Of course, um, this is all going to be done through a gaming engine animation sequence, so it just needs to look like it works. It doesn't actually need to work from an engineering standpoint, if that makes sense. So I'm going to be angling this uh, rectangle that has one flat side to it and adding a kind of like a circular drum to it just to give the impression that um, this device can tilt up and down but this is also going to be kind of hidden in the ship so i don't have to go too crazy here with detail but i do want to make it look good because it will protrude a little bit um, outside of the uh, surface of the ship so yeah that's the idea that um, I had going into this part of the design. So we're actually getting pretty close to the end build of this PDC design. I'm now focusing on giving this um, arm piece some extrusions and making it look like it can be manipulated from the ship um, by lifting it out, sliding it out and in and various angles and stuff like that. I'm gonna beef up the arm piece a little bit again I doubt you'll really see this but I still wanted to have this design here just in case you never know how far deep you're gonna see into the ship so I'd rather have it uh, designed already than having to go back and add it in later so yeah I'm pretty happy with it right now I'm also going to be um, adjusting it or adding detail to it from the back side by using these uh, tube or cylinders um, the idea is that these are almost going to work as like shocks i think that is the method um, that i'm thinking of is shocks or like like pistons sort of thing um, again this is all uh, just for show it doesn't have to uh, function in the real world like an engineer it just needs to look like it has 
a, a purpose or a function um, for the design. Again, this is all to build something that looks awesome. And the original designs did have something like this, so I'm sort of emulating what the actual PDCs in the show has. Now I'm going to cap the end of this piston with this uh, little box or housing, whatever you want to call it. And I'm also going to attach like an arm coming out of it that will go into the ship. Again, you're not really going to see this, but it's always nice to have just to give some extra detail and spice just in case um, the, a person might see this. It's always good to just design um, a little extra sometimes. You know, you can always remove it later. And uh, yeah, it's also going to add some further details to this little arm to make it look a bit more interesting. I'm also going to duplicate it and put it on the other side to make things even. Now I'm going to add something that wasn't in the original model and that's the actual cylinders for the barrels weren't completely cut through. That made sense. They were capped, but um, I'm going to change that. So I'm going to make sure that these barrels, you can see all the way down into them if I ever want to do an animation sequence where we go looking into the barrel. Um, you'll be able to see deep inside of it, which is not what we find on the actual 3D model for some reason, but um, it will be the case in this uh, model. So you'll be able to see all the way down into it and maybe we can do an animation one day with a uh, round coming out in like slow motion or something that might be very interesting. So yeah, and of course it's going to be having to cut through the plates. So. That's um, actually probably why the barrels don't look all the way, you can't look all the way down in the model. It's because of the plates that are on it. The plates weren't cut through, but in this case, the plates are cut through. And that just about wraps up the design. This was quite a long video, but I'm really happy with the result. And I hope you guys watched it all the way through because I find the building process really interesting. And I hope I gave some really good commentary about the design process. Let me know what you guys think of this video and if I should design uh, more stuff from the Expanse TV show, please let me know in the comments down below. And thank you very much for watching.